Hey, hope all is well. Praying that everybody day has been blessed so far and will continue to be. Giving God the praise and glory for another beautiful day here on earth. Amen. For keeping us safe and in good health as always. So we celebrate life on today. We celebrate life every day. Even the good things and the bad things. We still here. Amen. And we still got another chance to get it right and get it well with the Lord. Well, I want to say thank you and welcome to the Jones family. Please share this word out with your family and friends so that we can continue motivating and encouraging each other other in the Lord. Well, you all, today's topic is refocus. The Lord told me to tell you to refocus and do not lose sight of the things that he have told you to do. Do not lose sight of the promise that he have made. The Lord says to refocus because he got some really good things in store for us. But if we abort the mission, child, we'll never see it. So God need us to refocus in the name of Jesus. But before I go further into this word, allow me to say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for gracing us on today. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you, Lord God, for just being who you are, God and God all by yourself God but here we are before your throne as humble as we know how God and we ask that you forgive us for being complacent Lord God for being stagnant and the things that you have told us to do for doubting Lord God at times and for wanting to give up and walk away and for Lord God comparing ourselves to other people's situations Lord God Lord God if there's anything that's in our heart that's not like you we ask that you remove it anything that may have crossed our minds God that wasn't of you God we ask that you forgive us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Before Father God, I ask that you touch the people of God. Because I know one touch from you will change our lives forever. So touch us, Lord God. Come see about your children, O oh God. But Lord God, as I decrease, continue to increase, Lord God, so the people can hear a word from you and not myself. Father God, just take your place in my home. Take your place in my mind right now, God, in my heart. Speak fully through me, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask that you just have your way, O oh God. Heal the sick, Lord God. If there's anyone battling with any sicknesses or diseases, God, any addictions, God, I ask that you heal them, Lord God, and deliver them from all evil, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, just have your way. Teach us how to receive you in this season, God. Fill us up with you and your love in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, help us to refocus, reposition us, God, in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare that's done. You all, the Lord told me to tell you all to refocus and do not lose sight of the things he have told you. And I'm going to just give y'all a little backstory of what's been going on in my life. The reason why, you know, the Lord told me to refocus. I uh, ended up quitting my job uh, uh, through the instructions of the Holy Spirit like a year ago. And my life just been going kind of crazy. It's been a drought for me. I done lost some things, repossessions that happened. I haven't had all that I would want, but I have had enough. I have been fruitful in my droughtful season. But at the same time, it's not what I'm used to. It's not what I like. And God says, it's time for me to refocus because I haven't been going as hard as I usually go with the things that he have been telling me to do. And God said, all I need to do is refocus. Whatever it is that God has told you to do before you before you got to going through a trial before you start going through a storm God said he needs you to reposition yourself he needs you to refocus on those things that he told you to do even though you may be in a drought even though you may be going through a storm God said he needs you to refocus and just pour uh, and just put your hands on the things that he told you to and start sowing seeds back into those things. But at the same time, God needs for you to have a relationship. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to fast. God said he needs you to refocus. What is it that God is telling you to do that you're not listening to or you know to do it and it's just in the background. You know to put your hands on it that you're not putting your hands on. Because I'm really supposed to be studying. I'm supposed to be, you know, studying for the HESI exam. I'm going to apply for the nursing program next year. But at the same time, God was like, you know, you know, you need to be studying ahead of time because I want to ace that thing. Amen. And so God said, you know, refocus, refocus. I need to be studying. I need to be studying more than I am now. I need to be working on my health because I got a husband coming. And God was saying, <laughs> and God was just saying, baby, refocus. Even though this stuff is going on in your life, even though there's a storm, even though there's a drought, God said, you're still being fruitful. And he needs you to refocus yourself because God is doing something well and good for you all. Well, I'm going to tell you ahead of time what God said because I'm so excited for whoever it is. But God is saying, you asking him for six figures 
He's saying the things that he having you to sow into right now, you're going to have six figures every month. You're going to make six figures every month because God is going to double. Oh, my God. He's saying he is restoring to you everything that what the locusts have eaten in your drought. Everything that the locust has eaten. God said you'll be making six figures a month, but you're going to have to refocus and start sowing seeds into those things which he, which he told you to do. Amen. He led me to Jeremiah 17. And I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to start reading at 7. It says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Amen. So whatever you're going through right now, you have to still have hope that God will do whatever it is that he told you to do. That vision God gave you, those promises he made you. God said, don't lose sight of the uh, of the uh, promise. Don't lose sight of what you're supposed to be doing. You got to continue to hope in the Lord that he will come through just like he said he was. And I was um, on uh, TikTok, I believe. And I seen what Steve Harvey, y'all. Steve Harvey built a garage because his wife wanted a car. And she came and she was like, why are you building another garage? We want, I mean, we got enough cars. Why are you building this garage? He built the garage because he heard his wife say that she wanted this certain type of car. And so he went to the dealership. He looked all around. Nobody had it. But Steve Harvey still built it. He know he was going to get it. And this lasted for a whole year. He kept going back and forth to the dealership. And he kept telling the dealership, when you get this car, make sure you call me. The man said, we ain't got it. Ain't nobody making this car no more. But Steve Harvey went back again and told him, when you get this car, let me know. Steve Harvey went home and he told him, Man, oh my God, they go to Holy See. He told that man, when you get the car to let me know, went on for a whole year. Then he know uh, uh, the salesman, the uh, dealership called him and was telling him, hey, the car is here. Somebody that had this car for a whole year and they uh, want to sell it. And so Steve Harvey bought the car. You, It's a matter of faith, baby. Whatever God has told you, whatever you feeling in your spirit that God is about to do for you, you're going to have to keep the faith even though they saying it's not going to happen, even though they're laughing at you and talking about you, even though other people don't believe what God is saying is going to happen in your life, you have to have hope in God, amen, and continue to stand on it, amen. Even though they weren't making that car no more, they had finished making the car. Steve Harvey still knew that it was going to happen because it was in his spirit God told him something so whatever God told you even though don't nobody else believe it it seemed too big and impossible for them it's not impossible or too big for God God told you that he made you that promise so you're going to have to continue having hope in the Lord amen and then it says for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes and its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So therefore you all just know everybody going to go through a drought, especially when it's something that God has told you he was going to do for you, especially when it's something big, especially when it's something huge, something that will change your life forever. Even in your drought season, God said you still flourishing, you still being fruitful, but make sure you sow in season to that thing which he have told you so that you can continue produ producing fruit even in your drought season. That's what he means. When you in a drought, it seems like you ain't producing the fruit but long as you keep your hands and toy oh my god and toil on the things that god has told you to you are still being fruitful even though you don't see it at the moment don't mean it ain't coming and then when it grow child when it grow god said you will have six figures a month god said he's restoring to you everything that the locust has eaten but he needs you to continue to sow seeds in the season of drought in jesus name God said, don't be anxious in the year of drought. Don't be anxious. Don't be getting upset and mad. And I'm going to tell y'all, last night I was upset and mad, kind of, sort of. I was just having this thought. But I know this word is for somebody else because I was thinking, like, you know, I'm in God. And I've been doing this thing for years. Not drinking, not smoking, you know, having self-control, not to listen to R&B music. And I haven't been cursing. I haven't been fighting. I haven't been fornicating i haven't been doing none of that stuff and i was trying to do that so the lord can use me so i can be who he's calling me to be i don't restrain myself i want to be a willing vessel for the lord can use i haven't been hating on nobody i haven't been wishing bad on nobody i'm telling you all i have been doing this and so therefore i know it's the power of the holy spirit that keeps me in those times but i'm just like god you know it's people that it's not even trying to be in you and trying to be purified and wanting you to use them but i'm going through a drought just like they are i'm going through the same things they are and god was like um 
you know, I'm going to take care of all of my kids the same. But it's just like this. Say, for instance, if you had a child out here that was making all A's, she was doing good, or he was doing good, and then you got this other child that's not so doing good, being rebellious and all of that, you still love your child the same. You still going to bless them the same. But at the same time, this child who producing more fruit than the other one, it just naturally going to happen for them just because, but you still love all of them the same. You still do them do the same things for them, amen. But it's the uh, uh, seeds that they're sowing on their own that what causes them to be blessed amen so god is saying even though you know you may be going through the same thing that a, a rebellious you know child of god is going through you may be going through but god said you're going through it so you can be a light for them you're going through it so you can help show them the way you're going through it so you can help pull them out on the days where they feel like giving up where they feel like they want to commit suicide god said oh she going through it my daughter going through it she got a heart of gold she's strong and so now you can pull them with you and let them know that this is not the end of the road that is something better and so yeah you're gonna go through what other people go through arnetta because guess what you got to be used by god you gonna have to be relatable to the people that's around you so yeah you're gonna go through what they go through god don't need you getting on here and trying to give a person a word about something you don't know about so you're gonna go through it amen and god wanted me to tell somebody you're gonna have to stop wanting to turn around and run back the other way in uh in the world when something not going your way you want to run back to smoking you want to run back to drinking you want to run back to popping pills you want to run back to uh being sexually uh immoral god said you're gonna have to stop wanting to go back to those things every time something is not going your way every time you get anxious for something god said no that's petty you're being simple-minded God said, no, it's time to advance in your thinking and your reasoning. And he was just having me talk about that yesterday. Amen. So we're going to give God glory for that word on yesterday because that was a good word as well. Amen. And let me let me go on down. I'm going to read two more verses. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So therefore, I already gave y'all that word to uh, stop wanting to run back. You know, every time something don't go your way or every time something get hard in your life, you want to take a drink. You got to have some weed or you want to smoke a cigarette or you want to smoke a vape. Whatever it is that's causing you to stress out and worry, which we're not supposed to be worried and stressed out in a way. God said, don't worry because he will provide for you. Amen. If he take care of the birds in the air. He'll take care of you, amen, and he provide for you. It may not be all what you want or all what you used to, but he have been provided. God said you've been very fruitful in your droughtful season, amen. So therefore, stop trying to run back, and God tests our heart. Don't have a deceitful heart. Your heart is already deceitful, but you're going to have to have self-control and self-discipline uh, not to run back to those things, amen, and do those things every time something not going your way in the name of Jesus. And it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doings. So therefore, you have to know just because other people are where you want to be, you don't look at them and wish bad on them. You don't hope they fail. You don't go around picking and, you know, uh, causing destruction in nobody like trying to make them feel some type of way. God said you don't do that. You can't have an evil heart and want God to bless you. You can't wish... Uh, destruction on nobody and want God to bless you. God ain't gonna bless no mess. God said he can't bless you with the evil heart. And you wishing bad on people. You praying over uh, other people and hoping they downfall. They uh, praying that they have a downfall. God said no. No. He testing your heart. He testing your ways. Amen. And he said he give to every man according to his ways. So if you evil and you wishing bad you done built your own ditch. I mean, you done built your own table. You done made your own bed, amen. God said you done made your own bed because you have an evil heart towards somebody. And then, last night I had a dream that it was some people walking in the bed. I don't know why I don't dream about bands all the time. But I was looking down and I was showing my baby boy, like, here, here go to bed. Like, do you want to be a drummer? Do you want to play the whatever you want to play? Trombone, trumpet, whatever you want to play. I was like, here go to bed right here in a dream. And in the back of the dream, my, I had some sisters that were looking at me or whatever and showing my son and i had a sister walk up to me and she in 
insulted me. Like every time she uh, contacted me, she insulted me in some type of way. And I ended up and I turned around and I said something to her because I got fed up with the insults, right? And so God was just saying in this season, yeah, people going to come into your life. They looking and watching you. They going to say some insulting things because they are jealous. And God was just trying to tell me, yeah, you do have to say something sometimes to put people in their place. But you don't have to say nothing all the time because the Lord is defending you even though they looking at your life and wanting you to fail even though they looking into your life and want to insult you they just let you know that you're a bad mama jama baby and you've been sleeping on yourself but god said it's time for you to get up amen and the reason what for the insults and that's why you haven't been trying to be all of that but at the same time they're thinking you all of that god said you don't have to deal with that god said he got them God said, yeah, they're going to insult you. Yeah, they're going to try to attack you. But at the same time, there's a reason why. Baby, you've been sleeping on yourself. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to refocus because God is rebuilding you and repositioning you in your rightful place. God said, you've been all of that. You've been all of that. You ain't been thinking you all of that, but they do. And that's, for the, that's why the insults happen. That's why the attacks are coming. And God said, at least you ain't the one that's looking pathetic. You're not the one looking pathetic. God said, keep sowing seeds, even though you is in a drought, even though you may seem like you shame and embarrassed at the moment. God said, you been that woman. God said, straighten your crown up and get this thing right. Amen. God said, straighten that crown up and refocus in the name of Jesus. Well, you all, that's all the word that I have for you all today is to refocus because God is rebuilding you. Don't lose sight of the things that God has told you. Amen. Six figures a month. That Man, I can't believe God said that for whoever it is. Congratulations. And you know, when you get it, think about a girl. But anyways, God said six figures a month for whoever it is. God says to refocus because he's repositioning you. Amen. Continue storing your seeds in your drought season. Because God said you're still being fruitful. Amen. While you're in the drought, you're still producing fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Making sure... That you all don't have an evil heart towards nobody. Check your heart. Make sure you don't want nobody to fail. When you pray over somebody, make sure it's out of a good conscience, out of a good mindset. Don't wish bad on nobody because now at the same time, you're being a witch. You being a witch, anybody that have an evil heart over somebody, you praying, you know, for somebody else downfall, or you attempting to try to wish them well, and you really know you don't, God's saying that's witch activity, amen, so therefore, you're going to have to stop doing it, and ask God to purify your heart and your mind, remove any unforgiveness, any malice, any uh, jealousy or envy, tell God to do it, God said it's time for, <laughs> it's time for his children to flourish, straighten up your crown, sir, straighten up, straighten up your crown, ma'am, but God said you have been there person you've been that one and that's why the insults are happening that's why they wanted to see you down you've been that person but god says to refocus and get your energy back amen get your right mindset back god said he had to take you down a little bit so you can just you know get a feel of what it's like down there amen but god said no child you've been that person you've been that woman you've been that man and that's why the attacks happen that's why they want to see you down but god said refocus baby it's time for you to step your game right on back up it's time to be who he called Calling you to be and now that he done added him to you you untouch it but you unstoppable baby god said refocus because you're being repositioned in him amen he's rebuilding you from the ground up and therefore can't nobody touch you in the name of jesus six figures i can't get over this six figures a month that's a lot y'all six figures a month that's a lot he said he is restoring to you everything that the locusts have eating so therefore, you all just know that you're blessed and it's time for you to refocus. Whatever God is telling you to do, to plant those seeds, to water those seeds, make sure you're doing it. Amen. No God telling you to work out, work out. And that's my dilemma because I haven't been working out as much as he told me to. And I also haven't been studying as much as I, he told me to about my hedge test because it's coming up next year. Amen. And I want to get in that nursing program and I want to be the best in it because the nursing program is very competitive. So your girl got to come through smart. Amen. Will you all refocus and receive the things that the lord have for you amen do not abort the mission just because you don't have everything you would like at the moment i can close this word out about three or four times let me get off of here you all where you are remember that the lord loves you and so do i god bless grace and peace be multiplied